In this video, I want to take a look at configuring the Cogent Data Hub Tunneler. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's talk a little bit about what makes up a tunnel. A tunnel is made up of two or more data hub nodes that can quickly and easily share data between hosts and across networks. In this very basic example, we are dealing with two such nodes, one that is configured as the tunnel master and the other that is configured as the tunnel slave. When these two nodes begin communicating, the tunnel slave establishes a TCP connection to the tunnel master. With a data hub, this connection can be plain text as well as secured using transport layer security. Once a connection is established, the tunnel master begins pushing data to the tunnel slave. This process is called mirroring because the data in the tunnel master is mirrored to the tunnel slave at near real-time speeds. When we add in our OPC connections, we can see that the connections between each data hub node and the respective OPC client or OPC server is local and does not need to be made across the network. It's important to note that the data hub at either end of the tunnel can be sourcing and serving the data from any data source to which the data hub can be connected. We're not limited to only OPC DA connections. In many cases, the data hub is tunneling data from many data sources simultaneously. Now with basic theory out of the way, let's take a look. What I have here are two virtual machines that will make up the two nodes on our tunnel. Tunnel endpoint one is running server 2008R2 and will act as our OPC client machine. And tunnel endpoint two is running server 2019 and will act as our OPC server machine. As you can see, not only are these two machines running different operating systems, but our tunnel endpoint two is in a work group, so has not been added to our office domain where tunnel endpoint one is on our office domain. Traditionally, making a connection from an OPC DA client running on one machine to an OPC DA server running on a different machine is difficult, a problem that's compounded even further by one machine being on a domain and the other in a work group. Using our OPC quick client here, I'll try to make a connection to the top server running on the tunnel endpoint two machine. As you can see, not only did this connection fail with a very classic DCOM error, it took a while. It took a while for that connection attempt to fail. So let's try tunneling. On our tunnel endpoint two, which is the machine running our OPC DA server, let's set up our tunnel master first. If you recall, the tunnel master will be the side that is passive in the connection, but will push the data to the tunnel slave node. On this side, we really just need to configure the connection to the OPC DA server. On the OPC DA tab, I will add a new OPC DA client connection to our local top server. The connection name I will keep at the default. It's a local connection and I can browse to a toolbox OPC power server. The data domain is where I want the data from this top server connection to be put. We'll call this master node for now. The rest of these settings I will leave at their defaults. Let's hit apply. And we can see that the server status has switched to running. At this point, we should be able to monitor all the data from this top server instance within that master node domain. We can see I have a few production lines set up with a few ovens. We can see not only do we have data, but we have very rapidly changing data. Let's see if we can get this data to appear on our tunnel slave side. The IP address of tunnel endpoint two is 192.168.111.87. And if we look at the tunnel mirror tab here, we want to make note of the two ports listed, one for plain text connections and one for secure connections. 
On our tunnel slave side, on tunnel endpoint 1, we will need to configure the data hub as the tunnel slave. On the tunnel mirror tab, we will want to add a new master connection. Not only do we need to know the host of the tunnel master, which can be IP address or host name, but we'll need to know the port over which we want to connect. In this case, I will be making plain text connection, so the default port 4502 is fine. The only other piece is we need to know the local data domain and the remote data domain. The remote data domain is the domain on the tunnel master side where the data is currently located that we want access to. If you recall, this we named master node. The local data domain is where do we want to put the data on the local data hub node as it's being pushed from the master node. We'll call this slave node. Let's apply these changes and we can see the tunnel immediately sprang to running. Let's take a look at the view data window on this side. As you can see, just from an in initial glance, the slave node data domain looks almost identical to the master node. Let's take a look at how quickly the data is updating over here. So we can see even here, the data is updating at near real time speeds. The only thing left to do now is to make sure that the quick client can get at the data as well. Rather than pointing the quick client to the remote top server that we tried to do earlier and failed, now we just need to connect it to the data hub running on the local machine. Let's do that. Already you can see that the connection succeeded and I was successfully able to add an OPC group. Let's add some items. We can browse our Cogent Data Hub namespace, and we can see the slave node domain that we created in our tunnel configuration. If we expand out, we can see the same production lines that we have access to on the tunnel master side. If we expand down, we can add several of these tags. And they're successfully updating. The rate here is much slower. That is because the quick line is only subscribed at a one second update rate. If we decrease this, we can see a much faster update rate here as well. What we just looked at was a single tunnel slave connecting to a single tunnel master. In the real world, these systems can be infinitely complex. A very common scenario we run into is the aggregator or a spoken wheel configuration, where we have a single tunnel slave connecting to multiple tunnel masters. The single tunnel slave is aggregating data from all these different tunnel masters and all these different OPC servers or data sources in a single point where it can then be consumed. Alternatively, we can have the flip side where we have a single tunnel master that is serving data to multiple tunnel slaves. The benefit here is that the tunnel master makes a single connection to the data source. This means that even though the data is being served to multiple slaves and multiple consumers, the database or the OPC DA server is only being hit with a single request by a single master. For videos, documentation, or to try a free demo, please visit our Data Hub website.